welcome everybody. I'm Matt Schlegel here for NCTV. We're about a little more than halfway through the 2016 NFL season. I'm joined by my partner and colleague Scotty Luntz and it's our first edition of Beyond the Whistle so far this year. Scotty, we're, like I said, almost halfway, a little more than halfway through the season. How's it going? It's going well, Matt. So we're going to start with my team, the New England Patriots, currently 8-2 and two after a big win over the San Francisco 49ers down in the Bay. On Sunday, Tom Brady returned home, had four touchdowns, no interceptions, great bounce back performance after Seattle. Scotty, talk to me about New England and their Super Bowl chances. Are they the best team in the NFL? And uh, if their defensive struggles are anything to worry about? Although the Patriots may not be playing like it, they are the best team in the NFL. And they're my favorite for the Super Bowl, to be honest, Matt. You can't take much away from that San Francisco victory, given how bad the 49ers are. However, if the Patriots are able to consistently put up 24 points a game, they will be able to win almost every game they play. Their defense are struggle is struggling right now, but Tom Brady needs to step it up in order to make up for their woes. Yeah, here's what I like about New England. Obviously, they won a big one, 30 to 17, really 30 to 10. The final seven for San Francisco was a garbage time touchdown. Um, but they played that game, and they were, Brady was very efficient on offense. Like I said, four touchdowns, no interceptions. Really didn't show many signs of struggling in that game for the majority of the game, and he did that without. Probably the league's best pass catcher, in my opinion, in Rob Gronkowski as an overall football player, that is. And uh, what was big was they were missing Hogan, Chris Hogan, and Rob Gronkowski, and rookie Malcolm Mitchell, who had some big expectations in training camp, but was sidelined because of an elbow injury. He came out, he had a touchdown, his first career, 98 receiving yards. He played well, and Brady looked to him on a couple big third downs and connected on him for a big 54-yard touchdown. And Brady had great things to say about Mitchell after the game, so that's something that I enjoyed to see as a Patriots fan. As far as defense, I think they played their best game of the season defensively on Sunday. And with that being said, that includes their 27-0 shutout at home on Thursday night against the Houston Texans. And the reason why I say that is because they finally got a pass rush going. Chris Long has brought a whole new amount of energy to this defense. He got after Colin Kaepernick. Trey Flowers, who's in his second year, has sort of jumped, leapfrogged, you could say, uh, Jabal Sheard on the defensive depth chart. He's been a great pass rusher for him. Kyle Van Noy, who they just added from Detroit, he had his first sack as a Patriot. And so obviously I, the Jamie Collins trade is going to hurt this team, but knowing Bill Belichick and Matt Patricia, they're going to be able to put something together. They have great experience in Devin McCourty, and they have a great corner in Malcolm Butler. So I think there's nothing to worry about too much. So we're going to move on now to one of the hottest teams in the NFL, that's the Seattle Seahawks. Obviously, Seattle coming off a victory against the Philadelphia, Philadelphia Eagles excuse me, on Sunday and a big win in Foxborough on Sunday night against the New England Patriots. Scotty, talk to me about Seattle. So Thomas Rolls, obviously, we know, is slated to take his starting running back position for the Seattle Seahawks. The running game has been very slow for them this year. Christine Michael did a nice job filling in. But if the Seahawks can't get their running game going, I'm not sure how they'll be a contender in the, in the NFC. The reasoning behind this is Russell Wilson's a very mobile quarterback. However, his arm is overrated at times, in my opinion. He doesn't have the, the pass catchers in order to be a superstar top five quarterback. And therefore, the Seahawks need to use their offensive line in their run game. And that's just not there right now. On to the defense, we know that the Seahawks defense is always top five in the league. And that's what keeps them afloat in these big games. But in order, um, in order for the Seahawks to win, Russell Wilson needs to start getting it going and used his running backs to his advantage. Yeah, I agree with what you said. I think that Seattle is a very streaky team. However, as streaky as they are, you can always count on them being effective, and you can always count on them competing. I don't know the exact stat, but almost all of their last, I think it's up to 70 games, and as Russell Wilson is their quarterback, they're always in it in the fourth quarter and have never trailed in the fourth quarter by more than 10 points at any point, which is really astonishing. Um, I watched that team come into Foxborough on Sunday night where the New England Patriots do not lose often, and I saw them really beat down on the Patriots. While it did come down to the final possession, Seattle was in control the whole game, and people, you're talking about Russell Wilson struggling a bit this year. He has been injured, and he hurt his ankle yeah. and his knee. If he gets healthy and he's able to add the element of running back to his game, which is really the strong suit of his game as a quarterback, it opens up everything. It opens up the running game because the linebackers and safeties have to also play Wilson's running ability, which will give Thomas Rawls or C.J. Procise more room to run. But at the same time, 
Safeties are now going to have to stack the box a little bit more, and linebackers are going to have to put more men in the box to try and defend Russell Wilson, which is going to leave some isolated coverage. Jimmy Graham is really starting to return to the guy who we thought he was a few years ago with the Saints, which is huge, a big red zone target for Seattle. And I think Doug Baldwin's one of the best receivers in the league, and uh, Jermaine Curse is a very physical receiver, and like you talked about with that defense, uh, led by Pete Carroll, who's one of the league's best coaches. Absolutely. And uh, they've been without Cam Chancellor for some time, and they've been without Michael Bennett for some time. Two players, in my opinion, who are in discussion for maybe the best defensive player in the entire league, let alone at their respected positions. So I have Seattle going to the Super Bowl right now. I, I, yeah. I don't see any flaws with I still team. have Seattle going to the Super Bowl, and I like that you brought up Jimmy Graham. He really has came back to his elite form of 2014. He's looked like the pass catcher he was on the Saints, and he's looking like he's going to make the $15 million or so that he deserves to make. But back to the Seahawks defense, it seems like every year they have a major impact player go away in free agency, but they still have that resiliency to bounce back. And I have to give them credit for that. And that's why an NFC, which is really unpredictable this year, I would have them as my Super Bowl favorite. So now we're going to move on to probably the hottest team in the National Football League to this point, led by two rookies, and that's the Dallas Cowboys, led by, of course, Dak Prescott and Ezekiel Elliott. What do you make of the hot start for Dallas? And are they a legit contender? I saw Dallas being good before the season with Tony Romo under center. Obviously, no one could predict that Tony Romo would get hurt and Dak Prescott would step in. But this is a legit team. Even affected by the outstanding secondary cornerback, Morris Claiborne being injured for the last couple games, Orlando Skandrick has stepped up and regained his star potential. Byron Jones has done a great job at the safety position. And Anthony Brown stepping in for Morris Claiborne has done a nice job as well. When I saw the Cowboys play my Pittsburgh Steelers, they did a very good job shutting down Antonio Brown and limiting the passing game for Ben Roethlisberger. Although they may, the defense may not put up the numbers they hope for, they win games, and that's all that matters. On to the offense, Dak Prescott has been unstoppable this year. Although his numbers don't really prove it, especially his passing yards, he is a rushing quarterback and he can make moves in the in the backfield which really affect how Ezekiel Elliott is able to get open powered by obviously the best offensive line in the NFL. Yeah I mean agree the offensive line is really the cornerstone of that offense and I think that's where Prescott and Elliott's success is really coming from not to say that they haven't been playing well because obviously I think they're going to uh, have big great long careers ahead of them. But talking about the Cowboys' defense, I'm not sold on them just yet because really they've been winning games on the arms of Dak Prescott and the legs of Ezekiel Elliott. The defense has had uh, in the bottom of the NFL in time on the field, so I'm not ready to trust this defense because they haven't needed to come up with that big stop just yet. And to your point about the Steelers, you could have made a case that they needed to make that big stop at the end of that game. Yeah. And Roethlisberger found Antonio Brown for a touchdown on the fake spike. So for me, I'm not sold on that defense just yet. But uh, as far as the offense goes, I think it's as good as it gets in the NFL. And the thing that really sets this offense apart, something we've missed for the better part of the last year and a half, is that the guy who's starting to get hot and playing like himself is Des Bryant, who in my opinion is undisputably one of the top five receivers in the NFL. He can change a game, and he can stretch the field like nobody else. He's as physical a receiver as it gets. He's as passionate as it gets. He can jump. He can run fast. He's a very dynamic player, and having him play the game that he's capable of playing has done wonders for the Cowboys offense because he's been injured for the start of this season, a big chunk of weeks, I believe three through about six or seven, yeah. and missed a big chunk of last year with the broken foot. So having Des Bryant healthy again, along with Cole Beasley and yeah. Jason Witten. They're a very dynamic offense. We can't forget, Jason Witten has great chemistry with Dak Prescott in the moment, and he's that curtain that you can always throw to and pretty consistently will catch the ball. He won't drop it. But one of the most underrated players in the NFL, to me, is Sean Lee. Sean Lee yep. has regained his form of the all-pro linebacker before when the uh, Cowboys were very good. Recently, he leads the team in tackles. He has over 80 tackles on the year. He's being a force in the second in the linebacker position, and he can he plays pretty good pass coverage. All right, so talking about the Cowboys, we're going to now get into some divisions here, and we're going to talk about the NFC East. Obviously, the Cowboys are ahead of that division at nine and one, 
But don't sleep on the NFC East because they have four teams who I believe are possible playoff contenders. The Eagles at the bottom of the pack, but the Giants at 7-3. and three. The Redskins are very good this year. You and I, Scotty, are both very big on the Redskins. So talk to me how you think the NFC East is going to play out this season. Well, I think the Cowboys are pretty much locked to get the number one in the NFC East right now. They just have too good of a record to lose. They're not going to choke in the late games when – uh, Jerry Jones will also have Tony Romo at his use in case an injury occurs or Dak Prescott's play slumps. I think the NFC East is pretty much a closed book right now, especially for the Eagles. Carson Wentz has had a great year, but there's no way he can contend with three great quarterbacks that are much farther along than he is. Also, with those three teams, they have great receivers at the dispensary. Jordan, nothing to Jordan Matthews. He is a great receiver, but Des Bryant, Odell Beckham, and Deshaun Jackson, and obviously emerging leader Jamison Crowder this year have really stepped up for those three teams and powered their offenses. Yeah, I agree with everything you said there. Um, I think the Cowboys, it's going to take a colossal uh, meltdown for them to lose this division at this point. I do think that the Redskins and I think the Giants are going to get the two wild cards in the NFC because looking at the other divisions, they're all pretty weak across the board. There's not many tight ones. But looking at Washington, what they did to Green Bay last Sunday night, Kirk Cousins is proving that he's not only a manageable quarterback, but he's a very good quarterback. He's above average. He's playing very well. He's proving that he's going to be worth some money this offseason. Yeah. So what he's done has really impressed me. And the Eli Manning-Odell Beckham connection, as a Patriots fan, it's hard to watch because I'm not the biggest Giants supporter. But those two are electric. Odell Beckham is probably the best receiver in the NFL, if not second, maybe third. Um, I see both of these teams making the playoffs along with Dallas, three playoff teams from the NFC East. What used to be known as the NFC Least, I see yeah. now is probably the best and most closest division in football, best in the NFC. Absolutely. So now, Scotty, we're going to talk about your team, Pittsburgh Steelers. It's been a season of high expectations coming in. They've struggled a bit. They, lost, they were losers of four straight heading into, Cleveland's, uh, heading into Cleveland on Sunday. Talk to me. What's going on with the Steelers? It seems like every Steelers loss this year has a bis, been a disappointment. You lose to the Eagles early in the season, a team that everyone had the Steelers winning. And you go on and they lose to the Cowboys. They lose to the Dolphins, which they've always had struggles against. And they find themselves at 5-5. Five and five. Luckily, the Ravens aren't having a much better uh, season, so they're tied at 5-5 five and five at the top of the division. But the Steelers are struggling because although their rush defense is very good, anchored by Stephon to it, their secondary is atrocious this year. They expected players like Justin Gilbert, young guys, to come in and make moves. But Justin Gilbert hasn't seen much of the field this year. And Mike Mitchell has been the only consistent part of this secondary. Robert Golden has subbed in at safety, and they've had Ross Cockrell playing decently. But if they can't have the secondary step up, Ben Roethlisberger will have to prove that he's still the elite quarterback that everyone hopes he is. I agree with that. And really, my problem with the Pittsburgh Steelers is that, like we said, they have such high highs. There was a Sunday night game they played Kansas City, and they rolled start to finish. They blew them out, and their offense looked unstoppable. It was the return of Le'Veon Bell. And then a couple weeks later, here they are, and they're not performing well. That being said, Roethlisberger's been hurt, which has been the story of the Steelers the last few years, because in my opinion, they have four guys who are all world players, and that's Ben Roethlisberger, Le'Veon Bell, Antonio Brown, and a guy not many people talk about, but Martavis Bryant, who's a star, superstar, I think, on his way. They've never been able to have all four on the field at the same time. Obviously, Bryant suspended all year. Bell is either hurt or suspended seemingly at half the season every yeah. year. Roethlisberger str has always struggled to stay healthy. The only consistent guy they have is Antonio yeah. Brown. When they have all four of those guys on the field, I don't see a defense that stops this offense. I don't care who's, a, who's on the defense. Having those four guys on the field at the same time makes the Steelers a Super Bowl not only contender, but maybe even a Super Bowl favorite regardless of the defensive struggles. They're not able to keep all four on the field. And that being said, Bryant's impact He's not quite as good a player as the other three, but having him out there to stretch the field is huge because Antonio Brown is probably the best receiver in terms of versatility. He can stretch the field. He can play in the slot, underneath, over the middle, yeah. whatnot. And having a guy like Martavis be able to stretch the field and using Brown over the middle on screen passes and such like and stuff like that, the defense is impossible to guess. It's impossible for the defense to guess what the offense is doing. 
And then after that, they run the ball up your throat with the best running back in the yeah. NFL, Le'Veon Bell. And the issues for the Steelers are also their best wide receivers after Martavis Bryant are struggling with injuries as well. Sammy Coates fractured three fingers in his catching hand. He's struggling. He has three, four drops on the season. And then Marcus Whedon out for the entire season. They had to promote Kobe Hamilton, someone who's never had NFL experience, promoted from two years on the practice squad. This Steelers receiving core is not experienced. And you see it with Ben Roethlisberger missing Antonio Brown and Eli Rogers on many throws during the last couple games. The Steelers need to work in practice on Ben Roethlisberger developing the chemistry with not only the wide receiver core, but a tight end who's going to be huge in their late playoff stretch, Ladarius Green. Yep. Really quick, what's your prediction for how the AFC North plays out? I see the Steelers at number one. And then I see the Ravens at number two, Bengals three at four. I think that's what it seems like right now. The only difference is Steelers or Ravens. If Joe Flacco can step up like he did, he has in recent years, I could see the Ravens completely winning that division. If Steve Smith can play back to elite status, they can. But there's too many ifs and older players on the Ravens team to consistently say they'll win the AFC North. Yeah, and I'll give both teams credit while they've struggled a bit so far this regular season. I look at both teams as if they get in the playoffs, they can make noise. I think both teams have experienced quarterbacks, experienced coaches. So that's something to look out for. We're going to wrap up, not wrap it up just yet, but we're going to talk quickly about the closest division, probably the best division in football, AFC West. You got Denver, Kansas City, and Oakland, all with winning records, all in playoff positions right now. San Diego Chargers, not the best record, but they've been in some really yeah. close games, and they've shown that they can compete with some pretty good teams. How do you see this division playing out? I got to see the Raiders are going to win the division because there's only so much the Denver Broncos can do with Trevor Simeon under quarterback. He is an average NFL quarterback, and he will play the role, and will play the role of Peyton Manning did in the Super Bowl for the Denver Broncos, but I can't see them beating an offense that is shrieking at such a high level as the Raiders. The Raiders had a very bad first three quarters in yesterday's game against the Houston Texans, but the important part is Latavius Murray was able to rip off an 18-yard run in the last drive, Amari Cooper obviously with the touchdown, and Derek Carr going back to what everyone hopes he is, an elite top five quarterback. I see the Raiders winning this division, and to me, Kansas City's a pretender. Every year they've gotten into it, they've been in the pack, but Alex Smith can only do so much. He's a medium to short range quarterback, and the long throw is not his game, along with Jeremy Macklin having a horrid season. I just can't see Kansas City getting into the playoffs. And I'd see the Broncos getting into the playoffs as well, as a wild card. I'm taking Denver to win this division, because here's the deal, Denver right now, they're, like you said, Trevor Simeon is not a very good quarterback, but I think Trevor Simeon this year is better than Peyton Manning was physically last year. You can never underappreciate the ability Peyton Manning had to still read defenses and call an offense. But what they did with Peyton Manning last year is they just heavily relied on C.J. Anderson, who's out for the year. So when I saw that Anderson was done, my first reaction was, okay, there goes the Broncos' chances. They're not going to be able to move the ball. But that being said, last year there was a point in the Denver season where I laughed at them. I remember they traded for Vernon Davis and they started losing games. Brock Osler was quarterback. They went back to Peyton Manning. I laughed at them and I said, they have no chance. And they went on to beat my New England Patriots in the AFC Championship game, went on to win the Super Bowl. Why do I give them a chance? Defenses win championships. And we're looking at a team that has been without two of their best defensive players, Derek Wolf, who's a very good pass rusher, and Aqib Tlaib, who's an all-pro cornerback who can really take over a game. So having Tlaib and Harris on the outside at the corner position, having TJ Ward as a safety, having Brandon Marshall at linebacker, having Derek Wolf rushing the passer, Demarcus Ware rushing the passer, haven't even mentioned probably the best defensive player in football, Von Miller yet. The defense has zero holes in it. And when it comes down to a close game, it could be in the playoffs, it could be a rainy game. If they get a home game in the altitude in Denver, Teams are going to have a very hard time moving the ball on this Denver defense. So I don't care how they're doing on offense. I see this uh, excuse me. I see this Denver team and this offense being able to win games 17 points. My issue with this team is they don't have the veteran presence they had last year. Although you'll argue that Peyton Manning did not obviously was incapable as a starting quarterback last year. He led that team with the veteran presence they needed. I'm not sure if Trevor Simeon can step up. He's had no playoff experience, no starting experience to this year. I'm not sure if he can lead this team to an AFC West division win. We'll see how it plays out. We're going to wrap it up here with our MVP predictions. Scotty, who do you like winning the MVP? Give me a top three. 
I'd say my number one right now of most deserving MVP would be Matt Ryan. Number really? two, I'd say, would be Derek Carr. And three, I would put Tom Brady. Number one, Matt Ryan, because the Falcons were not supposed to be good this year. Although Devontae Freeman had an outstanding year last year, everyone was expecting the Carolina Panthers to run this division, like they have for the past couple of years. The Falcons have stepped up. They don't have many receivers outside of Julio Jones, but the guys like Mohamed Sanu have played their role. Jacob Tammy at tight end. They've done their job, and Matt Ryan has done his outstandingly. We've seen him put up good numbers in the past, but none like this before. 115 passing rating, over 3,200 yards, and 24 touchdowns on the year. We've never seen this from Matt Ryan before, and we have to look at him in a new eye as probably the front runner of the MVP race right now. Yeah, I'm going to go with, at three, I'm going to take Derek Carr. And I think that Carr has, you know, he's really developed in exactly what Oakland wanted him to be when they drafted him a few years back. Obviously, it takes time. Very, few, very little do you see an NFL quarterback coming in as a rookie and be dominant, yet we've seen that with Dak Prescott. He doesn't make my list, though, although he's been fantastic. Derek Carr has come in, and the Raiders, low-key, are an 8-2 and two team. People aren't really appreciating the fact that Oakland is making a case to not only be a playoff team for the first time in a while, making a case to be a Super Bowl contender. That's a discussion for another time, but I'm going to take Carr at three for what he's been able to do with Oakland this year. At two, I'm taking the rookie Ezekiel Elliott. What he's done with this Dallas team, obviously he's got the gift of the Dallas offensive line in front of him. He's been fantastic. He hasn't messed up a single game, and when he has the ball in space, he's got speed, he's got fantastic vision, he can get in that second gear when he's down the field, he can catch passes, he can be physical, we've seen him hurdle guys all year. What he's done in such a little amount of time in this league, he's already made a case for being one of the best running backs in the league. I think if you ask me right now, I would say it's Le'Veon Bell 1, him 2, and then David Johnson, Adrian Peterson down the line from there, but being so dominant so early in your career, First of all, you have to ask yourself, I mean, what kind of career is he going to have if this is how he plays as a rookie? So I'm going to take Zeke, too, because I think it's been his presence that has made Dallas had such a turnaround this season. And one, i got to take my guy Tom Brady. What he's done coming off of this suspension and showing no signs of rust, he showed up this season, and he had that fire in his eye. He loves having the chip on his shoulder, whether it be being drafted, whether it be people saying he's done and should retire after the Kansas City game. He plays best when the odds are stacked against him. He came this year, and he wanted to prove to all the naysayers, he wanted to prove to Roger Goodell, he's not a cheater, he's a good guy, and he's the best quarterback this league has ever had. And so far, he's been doing a fantastic job of proving that. Fantastic number, 16 touchdowns, one interception through this part of the season. I'm taking Brady because what he's been able to do to elevate this team, they were winning games with Garoppolo and Brissett by a few possessions. They're winning, or by a few points. They're winning now by a few possessions. So I got to go with Brady as my MVP. That's all the time we have today. So again, I'm Matt Schlegel here with Scotty Luntz. This has been Beyond the Whistle. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody. We got a full slate of games on Thursday. We got Cowboys Viking, or excuse me, Lions Vikings at 12:30, followed by Cowboys Redskins, Steelers Colts at night. We'll see you later in the season. Start talking Super Bowl and start talking a little more in depth about the playoffs. Thanks for watching.